Whether you are a seasoned investor or you're just starting to know your investment journey, the markets at the moment can look quite daunting. Are stocks prices too high? Are they at fair value or are they still trading at a discount? That's what our next report tells you. Listen in. The first half of 2024 has witnessed a bull run across global equities. This past week, Wall Street stocks continued to gain as the US PSE price index came in tamer than expected. European markets followed suit. British bank NatWest saw a notable 7% rise after reporting better than expected earnings, while autos recovered after Mercedes-Benz adjusted its profit margin forecast. Despite recent downturns, European equities showed improved performance from last week's lows. Asian stocks mostly rebounded, although Japan's Nikkei 225 fell for the eighth consecutive day. Commodities experienced mixed movements. US crude oil fell 1% on Friday, marking its third consecutive weekly decline. The sell-off was driven by weak Chinese demand despite robust US economic growth. Gold prices rose 1% as US Treasury yields fell, bolstering expectations for Federal Reserve rate cuts. Looking ahead, investors will focus on next week's Federal Reserve meeting, which could signal further rate adjustments. Bureau Report V on World is One. We are now being joined by Mitali Nikor, who is an economist and founder of Nikor Associates. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, thanks, Joe. It's now nice to be here this morning. Good morning. Now, let me begin by asking you, do you expect any surprise announcement by the Fed this week? The USPC price index favors uh, where we cut soon. Uh, could you tell me what your take is on that? So, um, Joshna, I've been following the sentiments of the American economists, and I think there's a consensus within the American economist community that the rate cuts are not expected in this meeting. What is expected, of course, is a sort of indication to the market so that the market may form expectations about um, the upcoming rate cuts, which are more likely to come in September. The basic issue that we're noticing at this point in time for the Fed, you know, why the indecision, in a sense, is uh, hanging on is because of the lack of sufficiently pursuable data. I mean, if you think about it, at this point in time, they're getting early indications that, yes, inflation is coming into a range of 2%, which is which is what is preferred, which is what is favored by, uh, you know, which is what is almost like a target for the Fed. But then there's also the contraindication of unemployment, and unemployment has come in at 4.1%, which is far higher than the 3.4% that they were expecting. Um, also, a lot of economists in the U.S. predicting that unemployment could go up to 4.5% by the end of this quarter. Um, so, you know, with this conflicting data, uh, while at one point, you know, you are compelled to reduce rates, um, so that, you know, borrowing costs reduce, but then at the same time, you know, with unemployment data, you might think, okay, you know, is this the right moment or should I wait for another two months to be sure? Talking about rate cuts, do you think the Fed's monetary policy committee will unanimously agree on the rate cuts by September? That's what the market seem to be pricing in at the moment. So I do think that it is impossible for rate cuts to be announced if the Monetary Policy Committee does not have unanimous agreement. And that's because of the timing of these rate cuts. I mean, if the rate cuts are announced in September, that would be just two months before the U.S. election. And which signals a situation that, you know, there needs to be a broad based consensus within the Fed's Monetary Policy Committee to be able to put their weight behind the rate cuts and sort of divorce that from, you know, the overall political scenario um, that would be gripping the nation. So therefore, I do expect that, you know, a broad based consensus would be a necessity for such rate cuts to be announced in September. It's interesting you uh, talked about the November elections. Uh, could we possibly see two rate cuts then this year, one in September and another in December? 
So a lot of uh, American economists are expecting that. In fact, a majority are expecting two rate cuts, one in September and one in December. And I think the only um, circumstance in which we won't see a rate cut in September is if, you know, the consensus building that I was just referring to um, does not happen. And then why would that not happen? Is because of inflation data. I mean, if inflation data does not suggest for the next two months um, that the inflation is coming down, it's coming, you know, within the two percent range. Uh, that is the point at which different members of the Monetary Policy Committee may come in and say, uh, you know, we don't agree because inflation data is clearly not pointing in the direction that we need. Um, and and even if unemployment is increasing, inflation is a bigger target for uh, you know for the Fed. So therefore, uh, you know. The only circumstance that I feel in which the rate cut wouldn't come in September is uh, if there are any sort of fluctuations on inflation, which are surely uh, less likely, you know, so so the likely direction is two rate cuts. All right. So before I just let you go in short, how do you expect markets to react when the rate cut style begins? Right. Um, will there be a correction in the markets from the current levels? So this is also being very intelligently managed. I mean, the fact that, you know, we're having this meeting in a few days in July uh, will sort of bring in, you know, this this already, uh, you know, this is, it will be like setting market expectations. And, you know, so markets will be moving that direction of, OK, we expect uh, an announcement in September. So therefore, the because the expectations are already set, we don't expect markets to have a very strong reaction. We then expect markets to already expect that rate cut, build that into their investment planning, and then you know have a more muted reaction in September. This actually is the outcome that the Fed, uh, I believe, is going for, given that the markets will already be a little bit um, turbulent, you know, in in advance of the election. And I think that in December, the rate cut, which comes in this, maybe that will be a bigger one, uh, will then have a bigger impact on markets. And that will also depend on the election outcome. So I think these two events together will determine on the direction where the market goes. But I do expect the markets to uh, to price this in already, um, you know, one smaller rate cut in September. All right. Well, that was Mithali Nikoro, who is an economist and founder of Nikoro Associates. Thank you so much for joining us and giving your insights, Mithali.